it? Yeah, uh, when I had my son Luke 25 years ago, the woman next to me had twins. She called them Tom and Jerry. Amazing. <laughs> Megan from Facebook says uh, uh, a girl at my daughter's nursery was called Maleficent. That oh, man. Nice. Uh, from Twitter, uh, onto our Twitter account, I used to work with a girl called Chelsea Bunn, says Alice. I know. Yeah. And my cousin, <laughs> this is also from, uh, from our uh, uh, this morning on Twitter, my cousin told me that uh, her neighbours called their twins fish and chips. No. Oh, really? I don't believe that. Really? No. What are yours called? Oh, what, uh, Cat's, Bert and Ernie. Cat and Alfie's got They're two... children. Oh, my real children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me see, let me go back now. Hold on. Oh, right. so, so, there's, so there's Shane, Jake, uh, Mackenzie, Lolita, Bell and Romney Sky. Lovely names. Lovely Gosh. names, isn't there? Lovely five. Names. You went five. five. Yeah. Well done, you. Yeah. Are you going to be all right? Yeah, I hope you so. You sure? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go to a hot towel just in case. <laughs> Side here, right? I'm, I'm fully trained. Uh, we'll be with you in just a okay. second. Uh, over in Corrie, Jim's painted himself uh, the hero, actually, but is the truth about Peter about to come out? Stay tuned for the latest from all your favourite soaps. And talking about explosive soap storylines, after losing his market still, getting behind on the rent and being refused a bank loan, Albert Square's Alfie Moon comes up with a plan, burn his house down and claim on the insurance. But Cat's trapped inside and there's no way out. <laughs> what are we going to do without your stall? This time tomorrow I'll be back on the stall, OK? Fine. We're behind on the rent. Been evicted in four weeks. I've tried everything and nothing has worked. I'm not burning down the house. Shut up and listen. I'm at home. I'm in the bed. Alone. What do you mean you're at home? Goodness me, well, Shane is here now. Welcome, welcome. I'm all right. You're all right? Is Cat all right? I mean, that's the big question. This is one... I mean, his, his life has kind of spiralled out of control and normally his mm. sort of cheeky, chappy charm can get him out of any situation, but this Not time... this one. It would it's appear it's gone too far. Yep, he's uh, tried to pull a one to scam too many. <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing. No, only because it feels like something we did like, months ago. Right, And okay. I'm talking about it now. But, uh, no, it was a great story to play. Uh, and when we was, um, when we were, myself and Jesse were uh, with our new exec producer, Dominic, brilliant, he said we're going to do this storyline. And it wasn't sure who was going to do the fire. We knew there was going to be a fire. Uh... So near the time, he went, oh, it's Alfie. He's going to try and pull off this scam. And albeit just thinking it was going to be a bit of smoke damage, claim on the contents, but, of course, the whole house goes bang. And he thinks the house is empty. He yeah. thinks he's done this so that he's set it all up. The house is clear. All the family that's are right. out. He's out he was only going to set fire to a bin, wasn't he? That's it. That's all I do. Little burning bin in the corner of a room, bit of smoke damage, not knowing there's people in the house. <gasps> and look, and, look, and this, this is the moment where it goes kaboom. And it goes kaboom because Mo has left her hair products in the bin. <laughs> well, you do. And that hair product is expensive. There I go. Now, how much of that is you? None of it. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no. What was interesting? The running in, the running to the house, and the the smoke and the fire. But tonight's episode, uh, we use this rig that they've used a lot in the, on American films and American television, and it's a rig that goes around my waist, and it's a camera that's literally just in my face. Oh. So you see me walk in to the fire, but more important, you see me walk out with all this burning stuff behind me. How cool is and that? And that was really scary to play. Wow. Because uh, they literally... It's a control fire, of course. It's like, you know, typical BBC is control. There's 101 people there what with hoses. typical BBC well, no, because is controlled? No. Uh, most television fires, even I've seen you have fires here in the corner. Them. You had fires here and no one's cared. Wait a second. <laughs> I've got written down here. There was an actual fire. Well, there was a, a bit of the... the but behind didn't the... a bit of the set accidentally... Yeah, there was a bit so that was don't over give my me head. That. <laughs> <laughs> Damage limitation. <laughs> there, was a, <laughs> there was a bit of wood that ca kind of caught oh, just fire a bit of wood. over my head. Wood caught fire. You can't burn the actors. Anyway, and I was there with this camera, and they said, Shane, duck down, but you see this shot. And I'm really right close to this fire. Really exciting to play. Absolutely a thrill to play this storyline. And you loved the stuntman because you said he actually, he actually did look yeah, like... Yeah, because, you know, sometimes stuntmen turn up and they're like small three-foot women, you know, <laughs> and they look nothing like the character. But this guy <laughs> was uh, brilliant. And people turn up a set going, thinking I'd actually done it. And, of course, I'm going to tell them all that I did do it, aren't I, you know? If you damage Cat and some of the papers, and I'm, I won't spoil this because no. uh, we, it is tonight, um, some of the pa papers, let me say that it is, for someone, it is life changing. Yeah, very much so. And Jesse, go on. 
No, go on. Me, go, no. go on, go on, go on. And for her character, it really is. And for Jesse to play the storyline we've got coming up after this event, for an actress and is is brilliant mm. and it's such a departure from how we know cat is yes. you know the the tart with the heart and the heavy makeup and now she goes the complete opposite to that and, and it's really heartbreaking to play it? yeah sadly we don't know oh. but that leads us up to christmas and of course coming up to the 30th anniversary which is uh mm. next february march oh, so a lot of stories okay. will resolve that are now beginning to bubble away at the moment very good. So that's EastEnders. That's tonight at 7.30 yes. on BBC One. We, we had Colleen in uh, last week talking about Jake's success in Rixton. It's his birthday today. Is it his oh, birthday? It's his birthday. Oh, oh, birthday. I think he's being you. sick birthday. on the teacups in Elton Towers at the moment, I think, as we speak. Exactly. They yeah, are doing boys. so well. The success. I mean, it's incredible. It's, I mean, I know he's his son and obviously you always think he's brilliant, but I mean, he's, he's done it. Like, he's cracked it. Yeah, and it, it, it seems like it's taken years to be an overnight success. You know, because when I was doing Boogie Night, when I was doing Grease, at the time you are doing Joseph, and I was in Grease, he was two then, and he'd come and sit with me in a little leather jacket and yeah. watch the show, and knowing all the time he was going to have some sort of career in the business. So now he's an international pop star. Pop star. Is, uh, is he rocking up with just a whole load of laundry? Well, last week, or the week before, he turned up at the house, I'm thinking, Oh, yeah, all the kids are excited to see him. He's got his big bag. Went, you right? He said, yeah, Dad, can you well, we just going to do my pants and my socks? <laughs> Something so, so changing. No, so I'm sitting there watching, and he's actually sitting in front of the telly watching you guys, and I'm going, I can't believe it. And on the radio in the background, I can hear, me and my bro, can I? And he's sitting there with his feet up watching you two. <laughs> and I think my pop star son there. Well, it's interesting <laughs> that uh, that he was uh, he was doing that, because at some stage during the course of his time at home, I know he's not home very often, yeah. He actually was um, he was spending some time in the uh, in the loft up in the attic. Did you know that? No, what? No. Have a look at this. Hello, Dad. It's uh, Jake here, your son. Surprise! Uh, listen, I've got to be really quick. So I'm cleaning out the attic, uh, and there's a few things I found. I found awards from way back when. This award is for Mr. Shane Ritchie uh, for best actor in a soap. Look at that. Incredible, incredible achievement. Very proud. Covered in dust. Uh, there's another one here, Mr. Shane Ritchie. Again, surprise, uh, for sexiest male. <laughs> Gr that's great, that one. Um, that's a lot of fun. Uh, there's another one here. Where are we? There we go. Uh, this is for uh, Rixton, Me and My Broken Heart, the number one single. I don't know how this has ended up with my dad's, because this, like, he hasn't got one of these. This is just for me. That's something you haven't got. Um, but anyway, I love you, uh, and I'll see you very soon. Mwah. Oh. And Shane Ritchie Boy. Jr. doing very well. Shane's great, yeah, and I think next year's going to be Shane's year. Um, I think there's something bubbling away there for him. You must be very um, proud. And then Mackenzie and Alita, they're, they're going to be in the business. Did, um, didn't he get you into trouble, though, uh, Jake, by saying something at a gig about what happens to Alfie? Didn't he blurt it out yeah, or tweet? he said something on stage. <laughs> in, I was at a gig and he said, I'll just let you know my dad dies Christmas. And I went, what? <laughs> And he went, no, no, not my dad, Alfie. And I'm going, no, it'd be less serious if you said it was me. Never mind Alfie. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not putting up saying that Alfie might die, not me. And I'm going, and I've come off stage. I'm going, what did you say that for? He said, it's all right. Me and my bro. <laughs> <laughs> so it just went mental. But... We, uh, we can see where the, obviously, a very musical family, uh, we can see where it's, uh, where it's come from. And we just want to show you this. I think this is from 1987. Oh, what? I've got to finish my bit on this TV show, cos time's run now, now i got to go. I hope you've had some fun tonight, so come on down, the price is right. <laughs> Listen, I couldn't find anything to rhyme with three to one. Get off, we're winning. 10, 11, 13, 4. Get down, Dusty Bin. Check you out with your mates there. My mullet. I <laughs> see where the talent has come from, can you? <laughs> oh, I love what it. What were you doing in 87? Uh, Saturday mornings. See, and I got yeah. lumbered with that. There you go. Uh, I think if you played any of my yeah. stuff, it would look a bit like that as well. Um, listen, amazing storyline. Thank you, mate. And, uh, thank you so and much. Thank you so much for coming in today. No. EastEnders tonight. Nice to see you. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you thanks. Right, still to come from a doll who talks back to a moody monster who needs tickling a dinosaur transformer to a sewing